is becoming the most notorious weed killer in the world. Glyphosate, or Roundup as it's most commonly known as, is also the most widely used. But for how much longer? Developed by Monsanto in the 1970s, glyphosate is a very effective weed killer. It's widely used in gardens, parks and farms. For Irish grain growers like Rob Coleman, it's an essential part of his farming system. By allowing weeds to germinate and then spraying with glyphosate, he avoids the need for ploughing to control weeds. This minimum tillage or min-till system captures carbon and reduces the fuel needed for crop production. Dad stopped ploughing about maybe 20 years ago and we started min-tilling. We're trying to get towards less disturbance of the ground. It uses less diesel, it's uh, less wearing parts and uh, it's much better for the land. We're seeing land structure, we're seeing increases in organic matter and it's a massive step forward to the environment because when you rip ground and when you move ground apart you release an awful lot of carbon. So the phasing away from ploughing towards min-till and on from there into even less disturbance. We're looking towards zero till in the future with the cover crops to try and move the farm forward environmentally as well as sort of work with nature. Agriculture all over the world is hugely dependent on glyphosate. For example, here in Ireland, farmers use it to kill off weeds before they sow their crops. But it's this dependence on glyphosate that has led to widespread concerns about its potential impact on the environment and on human health. The World Health Organization has listed glyphosate as a possible carcinogen, but the European Food Safety Authority has said it is safe to use. Dr. Cara Augustenberg is an environmental scientist who sees the widespread use of glyphosate as a threat to the environment and society. We brought her to the Coleman farm to see how they use glyphosate. This is a family farm car. We're growing grain here in Castle Magna for nearly 40 years. We grow a lot of grain, we keep sheep and we keep cattle. And uh, we're trying to farm in a way that's in keeping with the environment. We're trying to lower our, our, our tillage and we're trying to lower our inputs in general. I mean, I've read about no tillage and I think that the general perception is that if you're not ploughing up the soil, you're not releasing carbon. So I'd be really interested to see what the evidence base is around no-till and no-till systems. As an environmentalist, I'd be really concerned about biodiversity, as I'm sure you are too. And, and one thing we do know is that when it comes to chemical use, like neonicotinoids or even glyphosate, uh, that it does have an impact on biodiversity. So I'd love to know like, how many chemicals are you using and, and what, what's your approach to, to trying to reduce that impact? Glyphosate allows us to create that sort of um, step in the right direction to start cutting down on all the other things on the farm. We don't like these things, but they are necessary. We're trying to grow you know, crops in, in a damp environment. We get a lot of diseases and, and, and the weeds are there and, and they'll take over if we don't stay on top of them. So I suppose what we're advocating is the responsible, safe use of these products. We spend all day you know, smelling the soil and digging and seeing what's actually happening. So to get a good understanding of exactly what you're talking about, we're going to get a chance and looking forward to having a discussion but in the field. Have you got your spade ready? I do, absolutely. Well, we're <laughs> head out to the field, so <laughs> let's do this. Conservation agriculture uses a cover crop to build up organic matter and reduce carbon emissions from ploughing and cultivating the soil. But for it to work, farmers must use glyphosate to kill the weeds and allow the crop to grow. The structure created by this cover crop and these lovely small stable aggregates is what we're after. Look at so all the roots. There's a lovely smell off this soil and it's nice fresh and alive. <laughs> and it's very important to get your hands in the soil and if you see, see those, you can make aggregates small with machinery but really to make them stable so that the structure is there, you need roots. And, uh, nice then and once you have it like this, yeah. you need to protect it. So if you come in here and say we had no glyphosate and we had to plough the whole lot upside down again, we'd be starting from scratch. There is a public perception of risk and I think, you know, the fact that it's showing up in people's urine is a concern. Technology these days can detect absolutely anything. It's incredible. And they're talking about parts per billion now. There's more arsenic found naturally occurring in the urine, but they're not talking about that. It's getting special attention on the glyphosate. As well as spraying weeds before sowing, the weed killer is sometimes used on cereals to make harvesting easier. But this practice is not recommended for food crops. There are farmers here in Ireland that are using glyphosate as a, as a desiccant or a drying agent just before harvest. And I think then you know, it's far more likely to end up in the food system when it's being sprayed on just before harvest. And, and, and that's something that we should, we should just be banning outright right now. 
I think in that you, you're sort of saying, when we say there's a risk with glyphosate, we need to say there's a perceived risk because it's not proven. I mean, you're a scientist. Well, no, look, at the, look at the back of a bottle of Roundup and it says will cause long-term impacts to aquatic life. So even Monsanto, that that is indisputable. They've acknowledged that, that, that it does have an impact to aquatic life. When we're talking about human health, and that's the basis of this argument, a lot of the studies in the um, IARC came out with their data on Roundup and affecting humans. That was actually a long-term study on people who are using excessive amounts. I'm here to advocate the responsible, safe use of the product. And if we do it that way, then there's no problem. Um, it, it is absolutely sustainable to keep using it the way we are using it, in Europe especially. And uh, if, if we stick to those guidelines, then there should be no problem going forward to human health. We have studies saying that it is a probable carcinogen, and we have studies that say they're not, not sure, and that's all under investigation right now at the EU level. So uh, my own feeling is, personally, I want to minimize my body of chemicals altogether. So, so I don't want any bit of any foreign substance in my body if I can avoid it. Even if Roundup is banned in the morning, it'll be seen as a victory over Monsanto. It won't make any difference to Monsanto. It'll make a huge difference to family farms such as us who rely on the product day to day. It's a bit like antibiotics, you know, overuse is a problem, but we're glad they're there and we do use them carefully and there's no problem when they are used correctly. I think the best thing is to, to not necessarily ban, but to look at reduction and phasing out in situations like this, that's conservation, agriculture, you know, and maybe ban the things that are unnecessary, like using it as a desiccant. Glyphosate has been granted a reprieve in Europe for another five years. Until then, science will be used on both sides of the debate, but ultimately it'll be public opinion that'll have the final say. As farmers, we need to listen to people who are speaking about our business and be able to talk to them and discuss us. Once people start the animosity and, and, and stop listening to each other, the conversation stalls and there's no progress to be made. Uh, I suppose I have a dilemma with the fact that he continues to use glyphosate and, and you can see that he needs it to continue the kind of farming he wants to do. But I think we're both aspiring toward the same thing, which is ultimately to do farming and conservation at the same time. Join us after the break when I'll be in Cork with a rare breed of cattle.